Hello, my name is Sam Keen, and this is Explore Game Dev. In this video, we will take a quick but decently thorough introduction of textures and meshes in Godot 4. We will summarize enough of the terminology to get you productive in Godot 4, starting with defining what textures and meshes are and how to utilize them in building your game. At the end of this lesson, you'll have a good foundation to build upon. I'll also leave links in the description for those who want to dive deeper Okay, so let's talk some terms here before we get started. In this lesson, we're talking about textures and meshes. So what are those? Texture, it's really a, just a 2D image supplied to a mesh. Textures can be painted or generated procedurally through code with what's called a shader. In this example, we'll be using what Godot calls a material, and it's sort of a short circuit to a shader. But you can convert materials into shaders. And of course, in Godot, you can start with a shader if you want. But it's simpler to start with a material, so that's what we'll do. We talked about meshes. What are those? And and they're just geometric shapes that can be manipulated in 3D space. And really that just comes down to if we talk about something called a 3D object, like a cube or a cone on the screen or a 3D character, that's a mesh essentially, which these textures are applied to, to give them a look of whatever reality we're going for, photorealistic or like an arcade look and feel. Okay, so let's get started here. And in this tutorial, we'll be adding just a flat ground plane that you might have a simple arcade style game. You would, you know, place a player up on that ground. In this, we're gonna add a texture to that so it looks more realistic. Here, we're in a new Godot 4 project and we're on 4 beta 6. And so we just create a new 3D scene. Let's rename this to world. Then let's add a mesh instance 3D and this will be our ground. So let's rename that to ground. So we've already come across a mesh. So what is a mesh? In terms, it's typically short for polygon mesh. You might hear it called that. And essentially it's a 3D shape or a bit more precisely, it's a collection of vertices, edges, and faces. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But for now, understand in Godot, a mesh needs a shape. And we can see if we look in inspector, uh, we have mesh here, and then this is where we can choose the shape for it. And there's quite a few different shapes. We'll use a couple in this tutorial. One that's ideal for this ground would be a plane mesh. So we'll choose that as the shape. And we can see it's put this two-dimensional shape in. It has width and depth, but no height. So again, that's ideal for ground. If we click on it in the inspector, we see all of its attributes. And we can make this a little bigger up to like, let's say 300 meters by 300 meters square. So now that's much bigger gives us some room to move around. Right now it uh, renders it as white color and we're gonna go ahead and add a texture to that soon. So what is a texture? Essentially it's a image file or we'll soon see it's a collection of files and we apply discrete image files to our shape or mesh as it's called. We'll use a process known or a standard known as PBR or physically based rendering. This is common throughout the industry. It will essentially simulate the flow of light from the real world onto our 3D shape, onto our mesh. There's aspects of PBR such as reflection, diffusion, and metallicity. Often you might hear these referred to as maps, so they're kind of interchangeable on in that I've seen in the documentation. So you might hear of diffuse map or metallicity map versus texture being used for the name, kind of interchangeable. Again, you'll see links in the description that dive deeper into PDR, but just know it's a standard for essentially making these 3D shapes have a texture to them. And this, we're going to go for a kind of a photorealism effect. That's often the case, but it doesn't have to be photorealistic. In our case, we will download texture files that someone has created for us. And there's a lot of great sources for that. We will be grabbing one file for the base color of our texture. One will give the illusion of bumpiness. So that'd be another file. And then a final file to show roughness, also known as gloss for our object. So one great place to get textures is a site called Polyhaven. And you can see they have other things, models also. That'll be another video, of course. So if we go into textures, and these are all under a license called CCO, which is a Creative Commons license, which essentially means these are pretty much public domain. So you can really use these for any purpose that you see fit, but you can, when you select certain texture, you can read about that CCO license to make sure it meets your needs. And we're gonna use a texture called Rocky Trail, which is this one. So we go ahead and select that. And you see, again, this is photorealistic. It's a literal image that's been taken and then turned into these files needed by this PBR standard. So we will download it. And the easiest way to do that here is 
select zip that lets you select the files you want to get. In our case, we have that again, that diffuse, which is the base color. And so as soon as you use that, it will look like the image. It just won't have any illusion of depth. That comes in with the normal, often called the normal map that brings in the bumpiness we talked about. We'll see as we rotate the light, we'll see the shadows effect on the raised parts in this photo. And again, we choose the GL, which is the open GL version. The X is the direct X. Godot uses GL, so we'll, we'll grab that one. And lastly, we'll grab the rough texture. So we'll download those three in the PNG format. Okay, so now we've downloaded those files and in our project, we've created a textures folder just to kind of keep things a little organized. So we'll just grab these and drop them into our project. You might have seen the megabytes. They're pretty large files, so depending on your system, it may take a little while to import. So those are now imported here. And now we can go ahead and put those to use in our project. And before we apply these files, we want to, again, this will be sort of a photorealistic rocky base. And so we want to have something to judge the scale by as these come in. So let's go ahead and add sort of a humanoid stand in. Again, that'll be a, a shape. So another mesh instance 3D. And we'll just call this one player. And we know in Godot, we have our mesh instance. We need to add a shape to it. The common is the capsule mesh for doing prototypes. And if we look at that, we can see that it's roughly two meters high, which is essentially a tall human. We see that we have to zoom in quite a bit and we go ahead and move this up above the ground plane. So now we have our perspective of roughly what a human size will be. So as we pull in these textures, we can see that, you know, those rocks are about the right size. Also, we want to add lighting and we want to be able to control that lighting. So in Godot 4, there's a preview lighting in the viewport. We want to control that so we can sort of import it into the scene with this little dialogue here. So just add sun to scene. And now we see we have that directional light. So let's move it up a little bit. We can see that. And now we can rotate that when we get our texture on. And you, know, you can see on the player that shadow respecting where the light's coming from. And we will see as we build up our texture, it will do the same thing. So now let's get to what we came here for, applying these uh, texture files to this mesh. And in Godot, a common way to do it in this is to look at our mesh which is our ground in this case. And it has a material attribute, which is empty to start. And we want to add a material and then we'll actually add the files to that material. So there's three choices here. There's standard material and ORM material. ORM stands for occlusion, roughness, and metallicity or metallic. These two files standard in ORM are pretty much the same, except for the attributes of occlusion, roughness, and metallic are all represented by one texture file, whereas in standard, they each have their own texture file. So not super relevant for us here. We're going to choose standard, but just wanted to call out what that other difference is. Shader material, this shows that actually we're kind of taking shortcuts with these materials. Normally to do highly detailed texturing, you would use a shader to get full control. So you can start out with a shader and just do everything from scratch. You can also take these sort of shortcuts that Godot provides us these materials and you can convert them to shaders if you find that you need to take them further and get that full control. So enough said about that. I just wanted you to know what some of those options are. So we're going to choose standard material 3D. And now if we click on that, now we see all these attributes. And this is kind of when this is what's representing that PBR format. And again, it's a strong guidance of how to get these textures onto this mesh. You'll see differences across game engines for sure. Some of these names will be different. And as you read up on documentation, some of them will, will also be different. We talked about roughness might be seen as gloss in some other documentation. Know that there's certainly commonalities, but you'll see differences as you read through the documentation. So just to call out there. So again, enough talk. Let's get some texture on here. So the first one would be the diffuse, or again, we called that sort of the base color. And that is applied, and we talked about names being different. That's applied through the albedo, which is a very common term used to represent color of a texture. It has, we'll see this texture attribute. And here we can see that it's, it's right now it's white. So that's why this plane is white. If we change that color, this would all change. But as soon as we apply a texture, that will sort of override that. So we go ahead and click and drag the texture, pop it on here. And you see right away it did render, but it doesn't look like the picture we saw. And you can almost see pretty easily that we're drastically zoomed in. If we zoom all the way out to this 300 by 300, we're still way too far zoomed in. So that is fixable. And that again, that's why we put this humanoid 
stand in here so we can tell that this, this texture scale is wrong for our purposes. To affect that scale, we can go to the UV channel here, UV1. We'll talk not too much about this, but essentially this is U and V as stand-ins for X and Y. X and Y were already taken with coordinates, X, Y, and Z. So the coordinates on textures, they use U and V instead of X and Y. So that's where we can affect the scale. I did some testing, and if we go out to about 60, I think, on each of these, now we see that, okay, that that looks more representative of this sort of rocky trail that we saw before. So we're much closer and you can tune that more to your liking as, you know, up or down. Uh, going up numbers takes you further up and you want to keep them locked like it is here. Otherwise you get distortion that you probably don't want for this sort of realistic texture. We did mention lighting. We have our diffuse texture applied. So now we see the image essentially, but it's not reactive to light. So if I rotate this, we see the light of the player stand in rotating, but it's not affecting the texture at all. And this, you know, we want to be bumpy rocks, so we would expect that to happen. The way we can make that happen is if we go back to the ground layer, go to another of these PBR attributes, we're going to pull over the normal. Again, that's what makes it bumpy, <laughs> to use a, a simpler term. That would be normal map. So we'll turn on normal, then we'll click and drag the normal map over. Here, you might have seen that effect already, but if we certainly grab the light and rotate that a little more slowly, you see, okay, now it's, it's having the expected effect on those, on those rocks standing up. We see that shadow shifting around them, as we would expect. Lastly, we shall pull over the roughness texture. Look at ground. I think that one's just called roughness. Yeah, there it is. So again, it has that texture attribute. Again, just click and drag it over. Drop it on, and that one, the effect's not as substantial. Often roughness is called gloss. These rocks are very dull to start with. Pulling on that texture uh, doesn't have as drastic effect, but on close inspection, it will, it will look more realistic. So in this case, for this texture, these three files do pretty much what we need. If you had different types of textures, like a, a metal or something, of course, metallic would be a file that, again, someone that prepared that texture for you would probably have the metal texture or the metallic map. And same thing, you would pull that file into here and it would give it that metallic look. Light would behave on that surface as you would expect for something metal. So as you can see, there's plenty of other attributes you can play with here. And I'll leave a link in the description to dig in further into the Godot docs and also and just to PBR in general. And it's just kind of a bonus here. We can quickly kind of and get a, a view from the player's perspective, like a first person or third person. So if we add a camera 3D to our player, and so now that's here, then let's just kind of pull that up, go to like a first person. So let's go right in front. And again, let's look at preview. So there you see, you could be walking around. We don't have movement yet on this guy. I do have a video that goes over the basics of applying movement to a player. And I'll put a link on the screen here that you can add that to the queue to watch next. So thank you again very much for tuning in to check this out. I hope this helped you out with the basics of meshes and textures. Please leave comments below on this video or other topics that you'd like to see covered. And I'm glad to take those in as suggestions and dig in. Likes are always appreciated. It helps me support the channel. And please do subscribe so you don't miss future episodes. Thank you.